Hey, hey, hey guys, welcome to the newest review here on Edar Gaming, and we're talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh, I'm so excited to play this game. What a game! It is an unbelievable game, but it's not quite as good as Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, I know, and I'm not comparing it to the original. It's not how, I just don't see the game like that. But yes, I said it. Rebirth, to me, is not as good as Remake. We're going to get into it. I'm talking overall, maybe not specifics, but we're going to talk about a few more specific things and then I'll give you why I think Remake is better. Because I like to keep you all waiting. And I want to say thank you for everyone who supported me during my playthrough. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not. Go check out some of the other videos on there. But yes, let's talk about it. Let's talk about why Rebirth is not as good as Remake and why it suffers from sequel trap. A sequel trap. You know what I mean? Well, I call it a sequel trap. <laughs> but yes, we're going to talk about gameplay first because in these kind of videos, I want to leave the best thing, the story, and the spoiler, the main stories till the end. There'll be a few spoilers in the uh, gameplay, but not as many. I mean, I'm also going to try and make this not quite as long as the story section because I see this as more of a evolution than a revolution from Remake. And so a lot of the talk about gameplay, you can go look at Final Fantasy VII Remake's review and what I thought about that. So, you know, go watch that. <laughs> In general, I still am not a massive fan of action RPGs versus uh, the more traditional turn-based RPGs, like the Final Fantasy 3 to, you know, let's say, well, 10, I've played 10, and that's still kind of turn-based. So yeah, for me, it is not quite the same, but hey, I still enjoyed the game. Limit breaks in this one, actually, I liked how they gave you, so in the first one, you had level one and level two uh, limit breaks. Now you have the level three, as obviously you're going through the game the, the original, the remake of original game, you probably would have had the level three limit breaks then. So we'll hopefully get level four in part three. Though I don't know what they're gonna do about er with Aerith on that one. There's a slight little hint about what's coming up in the story section. <laughs> the big change for this one, and that they really pushed, they really pushed it, didn't they? The synergy skills. So they're effectively a move between a normal ATB attack, a braver focus thrust, bit of magic, and a limit break. So you have to use three or four ATB moves. You build up a kind of synergy of ATB. You have to do it with more than one character. You've got to do it with two characters. And then once they both have the right amount of uh, a, uh, synergy ATB, we'll call it, then you can use these synergy skills. So you know they're, they're quite good and if you know if you go for it they're gonna go but they at the same time they can be a bit fiddly to make it work um so, you know you have to keep swapping between characters and the ai isn't as good as building the atb anyway so you have to be more involved and switch the characters around which for me takes a little bit out of the battle if you're switching the characters all the time you know i know you're keeping it all active and the battles go quicker and you're probably doing more damage but I don't know, when you're actually playing as a character, I kind of prefer to stick with them a little bit more. You know, you get me? You see what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's me. That's, that's me. It's an alright gimmick. I'm not going to lie. You don't really need to do it in the game. There's one or two battles, I think, which they're a lot easier if you do the synergy because they can help you stagger the enemies. And that's the weakness of the enemy. But in reality, you don't really need them. Normal moves are strong enough, and then if you just look, you just fluke into getting them, which is what happened for me most of the time, to be honest. Uh, you can then use them, and that's okay. That's cool. So I know it just didn't make a huge effort to do it, and then just did it. I think the other big change in the battle really is the two new characters. I think we should have started with them. <laughs> really, um, obviously there's Yuffie, who I played in the intermission, but anyone who played the PS4 uh, Final Fantasy VII remake won't have played as her so she's a new character and then you've got kate sith now yuffie i think i really well i didn't think i really enjoyed her so she's nearly as quick as tifa but she's a little bit stronger than uh, tifa and yet she's also range 
but she has the elemental rangers. That's the thing. Her her shuriken, you can put elements on it and then you can hit the weaknesses while staying out of the way and dodging because she's quick enough. So I really like Yuffie and I think my ultimate team by the end became Yuffie and Barrett. Barrett's just a HP sink and quite strong as well, to be fair, and does range attacks. So there was him, Cloud, there's Cloud, let's be honest, it's Cloud. What the Cloud, why would you not want Cloud? Uh, and then Yuffie to sort of try and hit element types and just sort of stay out of the way, but doing good damage and then getting in quick if she needed to, because she's quite good at magic as well. So for me, I think she was part of my ultimate team. Kate Sith, <sighs> I wasn't sure about him in the original, if I'm honest. I never really got to grips with him. And I didn't get to grips with him too much in this one. I never really, I didn't really know what he was doing. He wasn't very, he was quite slow. His attack's not very good. But then there is a part of the game where you play as him alone and you have to battle with him. And at that point, I realised he does have a few good moves. There's a few there that he can do. So he did improve in my mind. But at the same time, it's a bit late. I'd already de developed my play style and how I wanted to do it. So yeah, I, I, I'm i still not solo Kate Sith. From the original and from Rebirth, as in the original Final Fantasy VII, I'm really getting confused about that now. I'm starting to really get confused about it. I'm gonna be honest. But yeah, but the characters, that's all right. The, the other characters are all basically the same as they were from the original with some slightly new moves. Oh, sorry, from the original, from Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I feel like I should probably put Rebirth and like Remake in and just point. No, no, point, point, point. <laughs> okay, what about the actual game? This is a much bigger change from Remake. You know, we've gone from the tight Midgar, fairly grey, to this pretty open world i mean i'm not calling it a fully open world we're not talking breath of the wild kind of open world but pretty open world massive areas at the very least i think the best way of explaining the open world is it's you s town city dungeon leading to a big open world where you do all these things and then that leads into like the next town village dungeon thing and the towns dungeon village things are uh, where the story happens you sort of go from uh let's say calm Min mithril mines junon Castadel soul blah blah blah, blah. But, uh, but between them there's like areas so there's the grasslands and then there's junon the, the junon area uh and then you've got corral past Castel Sol, etc 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 so you can waste your time in the open worlds and generally if i remember rightly you don't trigger anything in that you often get a chance to go back out as well. The You'll do a bit of story and then there's like a point of go here to carry on with the main story. And if you don't, that's when you can go and do all your stuff. So yeah, uh, you know, the, the areas kind of have redeveloped of what uh, they were in the original. So, you know, they, they kind of looked a little different, obviously. Uh, the Junon area is quite well, it's brown in the original, but like they've made it rocky. They've said it, it was a rocky area. The grasslands is grass, but not that much grass, I'm going to be honest. Uh, around, the coral area is the most different because like half of it is kind of like uh, tropical, not jungle, but like palm trees, beachy around Costello. So, and then it goes into the desert. And then you have Gungaga. Gungaga is the, the big, big difference to the original because uh, Gungaga was just a little jungle forest location, just one little area. This, they've given it a whole proper open world and added brand new things in. Uh, we, we will come sort of back to that um, a bit later. But yeah, that's the big one. I liked, uh, I think Cosmo Canyon's the best because you have little kind of gliding patches with the chocobos. So that was good. Uh, Nibelheim, yeah, it was all right. But it's very story driven when you get there. So it's actually quite good in that way. That's what makes that different to really June on because they're quite quite similar areas but yeah yeah so you know the, the the story of rebirth is quite linear you know you go to the next destination you follow it through you sort of when you get to it it's kind of like a mission and you have to run it all the way things through um whereas the open areas are, are totally open once you get into them you can just you just get given off you go go and do what you want 
and you can uh, basically scan things to really sort of reveal more things to go look at. There are summon these like springs to scan, which give you more story. Some like summon scans uh, areas that you can help to improve the summon of the area because every area has like a summon, like a god of the area. I would say like a god, and then you can fight the the, the summon. God, God, not summon, God. So then you can fight them, and then you can use them in battle. So that's yeah, that was quite cool. Um, it's and then there's a few like special battles you can do with like powered up enemies, special enemies. Uh, and then the more things you scan, the more you're allowed to do in the combat simulator with uh, Chadley, who talks too much. Oh my god, Chadley, no, I'm not happy about him in this game. He's way, way too involved. Some of it's funny, but some of it's really irritating. Uh, you know, so the battle ones are probably the best. The other stuff is, it's filler. It is filler. It's not a ch fetched quest. There are some of those, but it's not a fe fetch quest. It's filler. But uh, if I'm honest, I didn't mind it. I didn't hate it. Well, I'll put it that way. I didn't hate it. But I did it off camera because it's quite mind-numbing. It's quite cool when you've had a long day. I've finished work. I can't really be bothered to record. So I can just do some of the sidey stuff. So, yeah, I think in that way, it was okay. You know, the, it can be a little boring. It would have been if I tried to record it. I'm glad I didn't do that. But then there's the side quests themselves. The side quests are not as good as remake but the story behind them is better so let me do that let me just try and break that down so in remake it was basically usually more battle quests and you sort of do battles against harder and harder enemies rebirth you don't do as many battles as more uh, mini games and things like that a bit of fetch quests and there are some battles and some of them are quite hard but like generally they're not that bad and so you but you get loads of story and you build your relationship with the team and the characters so i enjoyed that more if i'm honest i do enjoy that and i i wish i maybe recorded the side quest more because they were quite good some of them but anyway there is one side quest though this one side quest that i do need to talk about the proto relic quest so it's a slightly weird one to how to explain but basically in every area you find this like other world signal the signal from something like from another world and you have to do four parts to it it's different on each one some of it's battling to try and get the items some of it's uh doing mini games uh and you know just just random things that you would do um i can't remember what some of the other ones were but anyway you do that and then after you've found all four parts you get this like little clip where you get sent to this other dimension and who is there who is there? Who was it? It was Gilgamesh! Oh my god, it was Gilgamesh! I mean, like, oh my god, it was crazy when I, when the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, it's Gilgamesh! Oh, I, absolute crazy. And it is, it is, I, I'm gonna put money on it. It is the one from Final Fantasy V who gets banished. Uh, oh my god, because he talks about going, he talks about uh, being in this dimension and forgetting. His memories and how he got there you get all these items and then you, he's like a secret boss like there's like a secret area that opens up when you've done them all and you get to fight him and he's quite you fight him a couple of times as part of the proto relic like, like little, little mini battles and he's easy it's really easy you basically dodge he falls over and you can hit him <laughs> it's so bad but the actual battle him is quite difficult because he's constant he is like over and over and over at you I, I did, I only just scraped it, if I'm honest, but I did it, I did it. And then you get him as a summon, but the best bit is go check out some of the, the well, the, the video and some of the shorts. I put those in the clips and when he's like, morphin' time! <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, but yeah, he, he says he's going to go after the, the Warriors of Light, so he's definitely the ones from the Final Fantasy V. I loved it. I really thought that was brilliant. But anyway, now... Now is the bit you're all waiting for. The bit that I know you're waiting for. The story. So obviously, spoilers. I don't know why I have to tell you this. It's took me long enough to do this uh, review anyway. So by now, you probably should all know the story. I will be pro 
providing some proper videos where I break down what I think's actually happening in the story of Remake and Rebirth, like, properly. Like, go into it, how I think the, the multiverse thing is working in the plot and what it actually means. Now, I won't go into it too much on here, but I will give you a few little bits of some of the big sort of story things. And I think the main thing is, I didn't find it as much of a what the fuck is going on like I did in Remake. Remake was like, it blew my mind in the way. And I don't know whether they tried to tone it down or I just kind of knew, you know, like you knew this whole multiversity thing was happening. So I don't know whether I thought, there were still a few moments. I just, it just didn't quite have the same impact, if I'm honest. But basically, Rebirth picks up in Calm. You go through the Niemelheim incident that Cloud remembers. There's a few tweaks from the original, but basically it plays out the same. Uh, and obviously Tifa's there, she's like, mm, I can't remember this. But this time she does actually say it to Aerith. So they get rid of that plot hole. Well, you know, it's just a little thing. Uh, and then you go through and then you have uh, the Mithril Mines, where you have the Midgars on them, where you actually have to fight it. That is a hard battle that early in the game. You go through the Mithril Mines, where you have some really cool, look funny bits uh, with Red and Barret. Uh, but you fight the Turks. So that's different. Uh, and once you go through there, you're in Junon, you do the dolphin, you do the dolphin game, you fight the battle. You then go through the parade, which is really good. Uh, I enjoyed the, that bit. Um, you go over to Costel Sol, this time not on a uh, like cargo ship, but on a on a actual like proper cruise ship. That is hilarious. Reading that is hilarious. Uh, Costa del Sol, broadly the same, uh, just about. Then you go through Coral, where you have more info. You get more things. But anyway, it get, it broadly goes through the same thing, which is more information. Cosmo Canyon, you get even more, and that's quite good. Uh, and then you go to Nibelheim, where they changed Vincent's backstory up, but they've also changed Sid's. And I don't like what they've done with Sid. I'm going to say it. I don't like Sid in the original. Let's just be clear. I don't. I think he's an absolute prick in the original. But I think what they were doing at the time, let's just forget, remember it's the 90s and uh, people weren't calling things out as they should have been. So, you know, Sid was not only like a grumpy old man, but he was also a sexist pig. I, the, you don't go to Rocket Town, so you, he just flies the tiny Bronco for you. and he, He's like fast travel, effectively, uh, for things. But they could have kept him as a grumpy old man, I think. Sort of a miserable, I don't really want to do this. But they've made him know Eric's mom and they make him, he's really excited to help. And all right, don't join the battles, but like, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested. I'm nervous what they're going to do with him because I think he could have kept the grumpiness to himself uh, no, as a, as a character trait. So with uh, just drop the sexist bit. It, it wasn't that hard really. I don't think, but you know, we'll see how they do that. Cause Square X have done a good job so far. Yeah, let's be honest. And then you've got Vincent. I really like Vincent in the game. I think he's one of the ones, like Yuffie, who is amazing. Like, they've really done them well. I know they were like, additional characters in the original, and so they didn't get the story beats. Now they're involved. Vincent shows he's a Turk or a former Turk. The battle against him is crazy. And, yeah, I'm excited for Vincent. He looks cool as hell as well with the gold, the gold armor. So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the story is broadly the same, except for two big things. We'll do the end one in the end in a minute. We'll do the way it's gone Gaga, like I mentioned, they give it a whole area. You meet Zach's parents, Aerith meets uh, his parents. You don't really see what they get to say, but I think the biggest one is Sisney. Sisney is there from Crisis Core. Yes, that Sisney. That Sisney from Crisis Core is there. And it never really says why she's there. She's kind of helping, like, not resistance, but, like, helping the town against uh, the fiends. But then it also hints she's still with the Turks. And, and, she says, she she hints she knows Cloud. Well, she knows Cloud. She knows Cloud. And she will answer one question. And you can pick the question. And I can't remember what I picked. But basically, she then implies that she knows Cloud is a soldier. Or knows the truth behind Cloud and is confused about why he's a soldier. And then it doesn't tell you. And you know when you're like, no, 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 no. 
I mean, it would have totally changed the game if they'd broken his psyche there. But I was like, come on, why would she not want to know? Why? Um, you know, she loves Zack as well, didn't she? And ah, oh, and then the reactor area there is really good, especially when Cloud almost kills Tifa. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, the bit at the end. I mean, yeah, the story, I really did enjoy it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Um, but the ending is good. It's bold. And it is confusing. But not in the way that remakes was. It was confusing as they leave a lot of things that you're not sure, I would say. So uh, they, the change they made is you obviously get the black materia. It's, it's, I think it's where... it's No, it's north. Which is obviously in the original game, it's the South Continent. So you then, so you go to it and it's in the north and then you get the Black Materia and then you go to the Forgotten Capital, which is like round the corner, which is the closer one to where it was in the real game, but it's not the Northern Continent. It's not the crater, which is where it was in the real game, like really close to the crater. They do say Sephiroth's there. So at the end they say they're going to go there, but you know, skip that bit. Um, and then you're in there, the Whispers are back. There's these White Whispers, which I think are like Aeriths and the planets. Sephiroth is now controlling Whispers, which, but uh, that was a bit like, well, how did that happen? But you, you're there, um, again, I mean, seriously, guys, if you don't know the spoilery things from the original game, ah, buggery, don't come at me. I'm, I've warned you. <laughs> Sephiroth is going to go kill Aerith, stab her like he does in the original. Cloud is there, stops her. Boof. Sephiroth is knocked away. And then, it clips and Sephiroth Mazumi goes flying away. He hasn't killed her. And then he like laughs. And then yet there's some blood that comes out of Aerith and she dies. And it's like, is there two Aerith? This is like the whole multiverse thing. So he's killed her in like one, but he hasn't killed her in the other one, but he actually has killed her. It's like Aerith's in the two universes, but it's the same Aerith. So killing her has actually killed her. But then these multiverses come back together and Zack, oh my God, Zack. Yes, Zach was there, and he doesn't play a big part in the game. You keep you keep going to him, and it's kind of story beats, not really. Kind of, it's a bit strange, but it. it I don't say I won't say it built up to him being in, but it kind of then, if he'd not been in, it'd be really weird. But he's there, and Zach and Cloud battle Sephiroth, and oh, it was great. I loved it. Now they don't get a chance to chat and have the catch up because you you think that they would. You know, like, you're dead. You know, you're dead. <laughs> like, you know, or like, Zach had a cloud in his universe, sort of thing. So it's like, oh, that's a bit weird. You know, but they don't get the chance for Zach to sort of ask Cloud why he's uh, pretending to be a soldier because there's been a few times where you met ex Avalanche people, like uh, uh, Biggs, who's like, well, Cloud's soldier. And Zach's like, well, he's not. So, you know, I feel that they're building this up to part three, if I'm honest. About why Cloud's lying, but Zach knows because when you beat Sephiroth, Zach doesn't die. Zach sort of goes back into a different multiverse again, a different universe, is what it implies. So my guess is, I'm what I'm saying is, Sephiroth reveals the truth like he does in the original. He will reveal the truth to Cloud. He's already hinting to it, like, and Cloud's too thick to pick it up. <laughs> but like, he reveals the truth to Cloud, who then has his breakdown. And I think Zack and Tifa will put him back together. That's what I think will happen. I think like it'll shatter. And I think it'll shatter in like different universes. So I think Tifa will put him together a bit like she did in the original. Because they've already kind of discussed some of the things of Cloud saving her when she was younger and loving her. And I think I think they are actually getting together as a couple. I think that is what they're doing. They kissed on my playthrough anyway. Um, but I think that's the canological one. But yeah, I think Zach will also help him come to terms with it and, and sort of help. And also what I think will happen is, I'm calling it now, Aerith and Zach will get a happy ending. Because Aerith, like I said, was sort of like died in the universe, but kind of then she comes back and helps Cloud in a battle. It's like, is this a different multiverse, Aerith? And then she sort of disappears, but only Cloud can see her. Now Cloud's the only one who can sort of see the multiverses anyway. So at the ending, he can still see Aerith and he promises to stop Sephiroth. And so I think Aerith and Zack will end up in one of the universes and that'll be that'll be their ending. They'll both get the happy ending because Aerith has made clear that she still loves Zack. So I think that's what's going to happen. I really hope it does. I really do. But yeah, 
like, like I said, the characters in the game are amazing. I really love the personalities out. Red's voice I find a bit weird, but I do like Red. I, I don't like the voice change to make him younger, but I like his how he acts younger. I like that bit. And I really enjoyed the story. I liked the playthrough. I think the the benefits for me of Remade is it's more focused on the story uh, versus the original. It's adding all these things in that we didn't have and it's building it up. It doesn't always work. Sometimes they're adding a little extra things in. Like, yeah, but like Sisney, I, I hope they it's not an Easter egg and they do play her up properly. Um, I think it does need those that stuff in to work for me anyway. But yeah, right. In conclusion, because I've been rambling, but it's such a big game, I feel like I need a proper review, don't I? Oh, try to bring all these ramblings together without going into the deep, because I could probably just carry on going. But anyway, <laughs> I can say at the start, I really enjoyed the game. It's a great game, but I did feel it suffered sequel fatigue. So like, look, what I'm saying is, Final Fantasy VII Remake blew my mind. It blew so many people's mind about how they did it. Like, it, people were not expecting that, especially the end with like the whispers and the multiverse is happening. So I then felt a little bit like, how were they going to build up even further for the next game? And I don't think they did. I don't think they went as hard as they could have done or should have done in my view. I feel like they tried to bring it back a little bit more towards the end. Instead of so Final Fantasy VII Remake blew it all up at the end. I feel like they're trying to come back a little bit. They're sort of about here, and then obviously part three they'll come back together. I think that's what they'll do. Um, so yeah, I just feel like it's like sequel fatigue. You know when you go see a second film and it's broadly the same kind of story as the first one. They kind of can't change it too much because that's what you want to see. So yeah, that's what I was meaning by sequel fatigue. Yeah. Sort of thing, but I think for me, I like I like story games. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a massive open world fan. I like story. I would have liked. I don't think I'd have mind if the open world bits would have dropped out, and you effectively would have had smaller areas that you sort of battle through. Maybe not like remake where you got all these areas that you just wandered through and nothing happened. You know, it's a balancing act. Well, I do think they could have been a little bit smaller with more things crammed in, so it felt more like bang 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 bang. Like you do. <laughs> you know, the, you know, it's just that, that the battles are good, but there's so much open space in these open areas without any enemies. And then you're like, just wandering around. I just want to battle things because I want the experience stuff. But I like the game. Happy I played it. Really happy I played it. And it's not done for my excitement for part three at all. I, I still, I am going to complete that. I'm gonna complete, even if I'm not doing this channel, I will be completing it. You know what? I'm gonna come back from the chat just for that, even if I stop doing it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh my god. Uh dear. But have you guys played it? Did you play remake? Did you play rebirth? Which one did you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the playthrough. And are you excited for part three? You know, subscribe to the channel for when it comes out, guys. And I'll see you soon for the story of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Rebirth. Cheers, guys. <laughs>